Hello everyone, welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who's helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We're so excited that you've chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for worship today. And if it's your first time worship, worshiping with us, we really want to welcome you. We're so excited that you're here. We invite you to use our contact form. The link to that is pinned in the comment section, and there's a QR code on your screen as well. Please use that so that we can get in contact with you, get you our e-newsletter, which has all of the information about ways to connect and be in service so we can come up alongside you in your life of faith. And there's also a place there for prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. So I encourage everyone who's joining with us to use that contact form today. Now, when we join together for online worship, we always covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. That covenant to participation is about, well, participation. This isn't just a random video that you're watching today. This is worship. We're worshiping God. We're worshiping with one another in community. So we encourage you to turn off other devices and distractions, to really focus in on what we're doing, maybe light a candle if that helps you to focus. And then when it's time to pray, go ahead and pray. When it's time to stand up and sing, stand up and sing and just join in all the things that we're doing together in worship today. Now our covenant to blessing is about being a blessing for everybody in the world, the way that we're in the comment section together, the way we may be gathered with other people as we're engaging in worship, and the way we're sending this out in the world, that all of it is a blessing to everyone today. Now today is Memorial Day weekend. It's Ascension Sunday. We're going to be talking about some of those things later on in worship. And it has been a difficult week in the life of our country and world again um, this week with the shootings in Uvalde, Texas, the shootings in Buffalo, New York. I know that people are feeling tired and, and powerless and scared. We've been spending time in prayer here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and how we can be in action. You see our prayer candles that are lit behind me that we're continuing to use as a helpful way to focus our prayer and our energy. And we invite you to do that with us too. We're gonna continue now in worship. Um, welcome. Good morning, this is Sue and Randy Burge and we attend Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please receive this call to worship. Our hearts are filled with Jesus's love. He teaches us so much. Yet we have so much to learn to prepare us for mission in this world. Christ is risen, even though we thought love and hope had died. God is here with us right now, lifting and healing our lives. Now, now let, let us rejoice, rejoice and, and boldly proclaim our love for God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Please join us in singing, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Tylan Bean, and I'm a member of the youth group at DAUMC. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. 
Lord of amazing visions, prepare our hearts and spirits today to receive your promise that your Holy Spirit is coming, is with us now, and will be with us forever. In the power of your Spirit, help us to be ready to be your disciples in all that we say and do. We ask us in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, let's share the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me, and with these folks in our church community. Peace be with you. We are United Women in Faith. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Heather Southwell. And I'm Francis Southwell. And we're members at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And we're here to say, Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Hello everyone, I'm Dwayne Williams, the Program and Community Engagement Manager for Compass for Kids. We have enjoyed our year here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and we look forward to being back next year. And I'm Lana Woodstein, the Program Coordinator at Compass for Kids, and I ran the site here at Douglas Avenue with our kiddos every Thursday, and they had an absolute blast every week here, and we cannot thank you enough for having us. And we're looking forward to the fall when we can come back. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. It's time for small talk, everybody. I want to invite all of the kids who are joining with us to come in really close to your device, to your screen, so that you can see and hear absolutely everything that goes on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our director of children and youth ministries, and her faithful companion and assistant, Laud the Lamb. So let's get ready right now for small talk. Good morning, everybody. It is Miss Lori and Laud the Lamb. And it is Memorial Day weekend. So good morning and happy Memorial Day. But that brings us to the question, what is Memorial Day? You don't know? We go through this every year, Laud. You always think it's about a barbecue. And remember, it's not about a barbecue. We usually do fun things on Memorial Day. Lots of pools open and we barbecue and lots of food and family. We have to stop and take a little minute and think about why we have this holiday. This holiday is actually about sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice. Sometimes if you're a kid, a sacrifice might be um, giving the last cupcake to your sibling. Yeah, that would be the nice thing to do. And you're making a sacrifice. You're not gonna have the cupcake because you want somebody else to have it. But there's people in this world who make bigger sacrifices. And that brings us to this. This is the craft we're actually gonna make in church today with our kiddos, but the red, white, and blue are military folks. Some of them have made really big sacrifices of their life to keep us in this country free. So this is a day that we remember those people that have done that, but that is a sacrifice. That's a huge sacrifice, but that reminds me of something else. And I think something's missing from this because there's an even bigger sacrifice that was made that we should remember this day. Give Law just a second, he's gonna finish. How's it going, Lod? He's got it. Just about got it. Give him just a second. We've added a cross to our patriotic wreath to remind us of Jesus who did the ultimate sacrifice for us. So keep that in mind this Memorial Day. Have fun. Do lots of playing, but take a minute to think about all of the people and Jesus who gave their lives for us. Happy Memorial Day, guys. Bye-bye. Good morning. I'm Martha Clark, and I've uh, been a member at Douglas since 1982. Uh, please join me. Our reading from the Bible is from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. 
Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through our Bible reading. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, Jesus ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go to heaven. May God bless our hearing and our understanding of the Bible reading that we have received today. Amen. I don't know about your house, but at my house, there is almost always a pile of shoes by the back door. Now, that pile of shoes is more or less chaotic, depending upon uh, what's going on in the life of my family. In my house, I'm the only person who wears a pair of shoes inside the house. Um, so I have this pair of beat-up old sandals that I wear. But all the other shoes that end up collecting by the door are for wearing outside, for putting on and providing support and protection for your feet to go somewhere and do something out and about, to school, to work, working in the yard, taking a walk, playing, exercising, going somewhere fancy. Um, I don't know about you, but when I look at my shoes and the variety I'm privileged to wear and the reasons I wear them, I find myself thinking about and giving thanks to God for the life experiences and stories that go with those shoes, like the beat-up sandals that I wear around my house. I do laundry, cook, clean, hang out, write sermons, participate in Zoom meetings, most often wearing those shoes. Not always those socks, but definitely those shoes. Or there's my walking shoes. Going to the grocery store, running around with my family, working in the yard, taking walks in Washington Park, all of the places I go and people I meet around town while wearing these shoes. I look at them and I think about all of those everyday things and interactions and all of the moments of and opportunities to share love and welcome, help and encouragement in my walking shoes. Or my favorite sandals. They have excellent arch support and my feet stay cool as a cucumber. I look at these and I remember just recently the miles walked through the city of Santa Fe in these sandals that I, I did with my family last summer. How I was stunned by the beauty of the artwork, of the surroundings, of the Native American culture that is the heartbeat of that city, and the amazing creative variety of ways people express God's presence in their lives and in the world around them. And then these are my everyday work shoes. And yes, for the shoe lovers among us, I know that almost all of my shoes are black. I seem to have trended very practical for the last several years. I know. In any case, these, my everyday work shoes, have held and supported my feet as I have preached hundreds of sermons, have walked miles of hospital corridors, trudged through grass and mud of countless cemeteries, run and played with children. 
Earlier this week, I stood in these shoes in this space that I'm in right now and led prayers of lament and action in the wake of the horrific school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. I played with our Club Compass kids at their summer kickoff party. I joined in a gathering of other leaders in Springfield about ways to educate and have meaningful conversation and work together against systemic racism. Earlier this spring, as I had on my work shoes and I was holding the hand of a woman as she died, I remember looking down at my feet and these work shoes, my feet in my work shoes. And as I saw that, those shoes that I wear doing so much of what I do, I was moved to a prayer of thanksgiving to God for the honor and privilege of being a part of people's lives in some of the hardest, most joyful, most sorrowful, most holy of moments when the closeness of God is all-encompassing and more real than words can convey. Funny to think that if my shoes could talk, they might have some amazing testimony to the grace, love, and power of God in lives and situations that I may not even be catching on to. The truth is, as funny as it sounds, my feet and my shoes can help me remember these stories and tell these stories too. My shoes are on my feet most every day in the reality of my life, my real everyday life, experiencing the love, support, challenge, and grace of Jesus every day, even when I'm having trouble seeing it, feeling it, or understanding it. Now, in our reading from the Bible today, the writer of the book of Acts powerfully reminds us of all that Jesus began to do and teach through the Holy Spirit, fully immersed and experiencing the reality of human life. Without benefit of something like my sturdy walking shoes or everyday work shoes, Jesus, on his feet, walked right into the lives of real people to do real transforming work in people's lives and communities and systems. Jesus walked the whole region, teaching, healing, grieving, eating, laughing, and celebrating with people. He was fully immersed in and experiencing all levels of human heartbreak, pain, suffering, and death. And after he conquered death with resurrection life, we read in Acts that Jesus presented himself alive to them, his disciples, by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days, and speaking about the kingdom of God. A writer of Acts makes sure that we remember that the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus is steeped in the depths of human experience, on human feet, in real life. Our writer also recounts how after his resurrection, Jesus told the disciples to stay in Jerusalem, the site of so much celebration, learning, healing, justice-making, and teaching, as well as betrayal, suffering, and death and that they were to expect what God had promised, the coming of the Holy Spirit. At this point in the story, it's becoming clear that Jesus' time on earth with them is coming to an end, but also that their work, getting on their feet and getting going, may just now really be ramping up. Now the disciples, God bless them, we know they are often a little bit behind Jesus. Behind, as in not catching on to what Jesus is showing them, teaching them, and preparing them to be and to do. And let's be honest, we love that about them. They are us. We often don't get what Jesus is showing us and asking us uh, of us right off the bat. Sometimes it takes us some time and some hindsight, like the disciples. It's hard for us to let go of what we think Jesus or God ought to be doing for us or doing in a situation, that Jesus' focus should uh, be whatever it is we're focused on. Sometimes we put our feet in our fanciest high-heeled sandals with, like, no protection for our toes when Jesus is asking us to put on our sturdiest walking shoes and get going out into the world. So the disciples ask, well, they don't ask Jesus for a recommendation for footwear, but what they do ask is a question that they often ask Jesus when they are beginning to get an inkling of what Jesus is up to. And they're like, hey, hold up for a minute. What about this thing that we want? 
So they ask, is this finally the time that you will make Israel into the kingdom with the political power and authority to rule the world? Really, are you finally going to do this thing we keep asking you for? Jesus' response is something like, keep focused on what I'm telling you here. Stay in your lane, friends. Don't focus on things that are not of your concern. That's God's business. You, however, have one primary job. Be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You are going to get on your feet and get moving, and you will not be alone in it. The Holy Spirit will empower you. And right after Jesus tells them this, at that moment, Jesus ascends. He's lifted up into the sky, into a cloud that takes him from their sight. The disciples were left standing there on their feet, but not going anywhere. I imagine them with their wide mouths open and stunned, staring up at the sky. Their astonished staring is interrupt, but interrupted by the appearance of two men in white who admonish them for standing there looking toward heaven. They say, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? Apparently, the disciples weren't meant to stand and stare for very long. Jesus had given them an assignment, and that assignment was to get there on their feet and get moving. They had marching orders from Jesus. They needed to walk right back to Jerusalem and receive the Holy Spirit. Then they needed to get going, going where they were needed, where Jesus was sending them and the Holy Spirit would lead them, right into the lives of real everyday people who needed the good news of Jesus and the healing grace and empowerment to love and follow Jesus too, in all places, everywhere, to the very ends of the earth. They were going to go right where Jesus was sending them, empowered by the Holy Spirit to call out powers and principalities that crush the least, the last, and the lost. They were going to walk to the ends of the earth, empowered by the Holy Spirit, making disciples, forming communities of love, healing, and transformation that would make disciples and form communities of love, healing, and transformation to Jerusalem and to the ends of the earth. Now, back to our feet and our shoes. I want you to take a look at the shoes you are wearing right now. Now, maybe you're barefoot at home, and that's cool. Think about the pair of shoes that you've worn most recently. Think about where your feet in those shoes have gone, what you've seen, the work you've done, who you've met. What have you experienced? And what have you experienced of Jesus' love and healing and transformation on your feet in those shoes? How did your tennis shoes get so dirty? Planting, weeding, moving dirt? And what do you know and what can you share with others about God's love and power in your life through those experiences? If you're in your going to online church house shoes, that's what I'd be wearing, or your bare feet, what do they have to say about God's love and power in your life? And how can you share that today in word and action? Maybe you'll be putting on your walking shoes to head out to the cemetery this weekend for Memorial Day. How is that a part of God's love and power in your life? And what kind of word and action will that call you to share? Maybe in the wake of the horrific shootings in Buffalo, New York, and Uvalde, Texas, you in your house shoes or bare feet will get on your phone or computer and get in touch with your elected representatives to insist on much-needed gun safety laws for our communities. How is that a part of sharing God's love, power, and transformation? Your feet in your shoes have been some places and have some places to go even if your feet don't work as well as they used to. Our feet and our shoes can be signals and reminders to us that we have stories to tell about our lives and our faith about Jesus, and they remind us that there is work for us to do. Like the disciples who got on their feet and went to Jerusalem and then to the ends of the earth to share the good news of Jesus, we are called by that same Jesus, empowered by that same Holy Spirit, to get moving physically and metaphorically to get on our feet, however it is we do that. And as we are going, reflect, remember, and give thanks to God for the healing and transformation we receive and are witnessing.
to get on our feet, as it were, and as we are going, ask why we aren't experiencing or seeing transformation where it's not happening. And then being about Jesus' call to be a part of that needed transformation, empowered by the Holy Spirit. I challenge you this week, every day, to take a good look at your feet in your shoes. Go ahead and reflect on how God is calling you in your journey of following Jesus that very day. Say a prayer, call up some Holy Spirit power, and then you and your feet in your shoes get going for Jesus, for love, for hope, for transformation, for good news to the ends of the earth. Amen. Please join us in singing, I Will Rise.
I'm Ellen Dixon, and I'm on the mission committee and enjoy being part of Douglas Avenue Church. Let's pray. Dear God of time and seasons, we stop to honor and respect your wonder today. It's the fifth Sunday of the month, and it allows me the privilege to pause and see that no matter how we try and organize the calendar or tell time or even our days, you are truly in charge. We even have a leap year to try and even things out. You, however, are always on time, even though often we can doubt it. I have down here, laugh out loud, Father. We just watched how you made sure that you died at the Passover time. Jesus, we present our day and our minutes to you right now. Help us use them constructively and wisely, whether that be speaking greetings to our fellow worshipers or caring for our own personal needs. Thank you for our new members of our church. How thrilling it is to have them here to worship, fellowship, and do ministries with. Help us surround them with the community of love. Thank you for all the Wouldn't It Be Lovely employees and their board. We ask this morning that you touch all the employees from day one until now, and those you are preparing for employment in the future, and our love in the future. Do you see that marvelous new house on South Grant? I am sure you have visited it regularly and walked its halls and nooks and crannies. Continue to fill this place, we beseech. Yeah, I even plead for this. O oh God of children, this is the end of the school year for Compass Kids. Thank you for this year. Hold all the planning for the summer camp in your hand and your heart. I know it is already there with you, but thank you. On this Memorial Day weekend, we stopped to treasure those who gave in the battles of the wars. Many gave in so many manners, and many continue to do so. Shepherd God, we pause this morning to remember those deceased just recently who lost their lives at a grocery store in Buffalo, New York, an elementary school in Texas, and a church in California. Our hearts are in pain. Let us take a moment in silent prayer to remember their precious lives. Lord, can we focus on the fear that is part of the angry 18-year-olds and others? Those who focus on conspiracy theories that promote fear and misinformation, speak into the hearts of those that promote anything that is not how we want you want us to think on any given day, nor in our daily focus. John 14, 27 says, you say, and you said this, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let the hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. However, Father, Guide our responses to these happenings in our world. May we be obedient. In Jesus' name we pray and let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There's no doubt about it. Your love of Christ expressed in your generosity is the key to everything we are able to accomplish here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We always try to make it easy to give, whether you use our online giving portal, available at the QR code on your screen, ACH Bank Transfer, you mail your check to the church, or bring it in in person. Your donations are always appreciated. In addition, there are ways coming up in which you can give of your time and talents to the programs of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. 
Have you noticed the plants springing up in the DAUMC Community Garden? A Community Garden Workday has been scheduled for next Saturday, June 4th, from 9 a.m. until noon. Come out and help us grow. If you haven't had the chance to tour the new Wouldn't It Be Lovely home, there are three more opportunities coming up in the week to come. You can take tours on Friday, June 3rd through Sunday, June 5th. Please see this week's e-newsletter for all of the details. Calling all the men of the church, have you considered joining the United Methodist Men of Douglas Avenue? They meet on the first Saturday of every month at 7.30 a.m. at Bob Evans Restaurant on Stevenson Drive. Breakfast, fellowship, and a little bit of light Bible study. What a great way to start the month. Have you made your pledge yet to support the His Home 300-mile bicycle ride? The ride kicks off on June 19th, and it's our way of supporting the His Home Orphanage in Haiti. You can now make your pledge online through the DAUMC Giving Portal. Just select the 2022 His Home 300-mile bicycle ride from the drop-down menu. Items are pouring in for this year's DAUMC Garage Sale. Now we need volunteers to help sort, clean, and categorize those items to make sure they're ready for the sale on July 15th and 16th. Pretty soon you'll be able to see social media posts promoting the garage sale. Please share those with your family and friends. And we want to thank all of those who have given so generously to help keep the DAUMC food micropantry stocked. You're helping us to combat food insecurity right here in our own neighborhood. If you have the opportunity this week, please pick up a few items as you're at the grocery store. You can place them in the pantry, which is located on the west edge of the campus at the entrance to the Education Building. And we hope you'll join us both in person and online next Sunday as we observe Pentecost. Pentecost celebrates the birth of Christ's church on earth and the arrival of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's traditional to wear red to worship that day. We hope you'll join in that tradition. But no matter what you're wearing, we hope we see you in worship for this wonderful celebration. My, there are a lot of ways to grow your faith at Douglas Avenue. The best way to keep up with everything is to make sure you're signed up for our e-newsletter and our printed mail newsletter. You can do that by scanning the QR code on your screen and filling out our online contact form. It's the best way to stay in the know. You can also provide prayer requests on that form and they'll go directly to our pastor and prayer team. Thank you again for all the ways you demonstrate generosity as we seek to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. But now, it's time to return to worship. Let's sing Christ the Lord is written today.
thank you for joining in this time of worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It's been such a joy and I hope a comfort for you to have this time with us today. I pray that it's been uplifting and meaningful and empowering for you, that you will continue to join with us for online worship or join with us for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30. There's so many ways that uh, we can connect together in faith, in hope, in prayer, in being people who are walking out in the world sharing Jesus' love and faith. So I hope that you will join with us in that. To use the contact form so that we can get in touch with you, get that information to you, and be a part of your growth and life of faith. And as you walk out into this day, Go knowing that the God of love is right there with you, that Jesus who walked this earth, who knows us, who knows our realities, our frailties, our sufferings, our joys, walks right along with us, and that the Holy Spirit is empowering you, just like the disciples, to be about that transforming love, remembering and telling everywhere your feet may go this week. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Thank you.